What is going on guys, it is Venom Surge here and welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Online. So this episode is going to be part of a new sub-series that I am going to be doing here on the channel. Normally I randomly select a random set from the game and I attempt to make a unique build out of it, not trying to optimize anything, but just trying to have fun here. A lot of people have some build ideas they'd like me to try out, so I'm going to be starting these challenge videos. So today's build was requested by, I'm probably going to butcher this, BLK Tana. They were wanting a build that was only base game, no mythics, no DLC sets, and no CP for extra points. So from what it sounds like, this is for an alt account in PvP. Now, I had realized that there are certain things that aren't base game that everybody has access to. Such as in the dungeons, White Gold Tower and Imperial City Prison are now accessible to everybody. Vardenfell, also known as Wardenfell because those two V's look like a W, this is also now accessible to everybody. And Craglorn used to be a DLC that is now accessible to everybody. Because of these, I ran into an issue of what do I consider base game. For sure, Vardenfell and the two dungeons here, I am not including those. I count those as actual DLCs. Yes, we have access to them, but I'm not going to include them. Craglorn, I do consider part of the base game since it's been part of the base game for so long, but I am not even using anything from here, so that doesn't matter. Now, because of this whole base game thing and lack of CP, as you can see, I've not spent any of my champion points, I realized that this build is going to be a bit challenging because CP helps you out a lot with your sustain or your damage or your damage mitigation. I realized if I wanted to make a DPS out of this, I'm either going to be lacking awfully in sustain or I am going to be so squishy that I'm just going to get destroyed. So I decided to make a healer. This is actually on a Nightblade. I have never done a Nightblade healer before. Uh, this was my first time doing that and it seems pretty interesting to me. It, it wasn't great, but what's what the reason why I chose the Nightblade is because of their great recoveries. Now let's get into the sets first. So first we're using Robes of Transmutation. Like I said, this is for PvP, and yes, that says precise. I want to get as much crit chance as possible, not for the damage, but for crit healing, since that'll help boost my heals considerably. So we got mag recovery, mag recovery, which will help us out a lot, crit chance, and then when you heal yourself or an ally with an HOT, you grant them 1400 crit resist for 5 seconds. And these are both restoration staffs. I forgot to change the enchant, I would probably change that enchant to something like disease or flame, something else, you don't want to double up like that. So that'll be on the weapons, and then on the jewelry with all spell damage. You can do infused if you want, that would probably be better but I like having a larger max pool, especially as a Nightblade, since you have a lot of percentage increases, so I kept these as Arcane. Next up, we're using Mother's Sorrow. This gives you max mag, crit chance, crit chance, and a ton of crit chance. This is going to be all the way across the body. Forgot to trait change these. You want the small pieces to be impenetrable, and you want the big pieces to be infused. And then for our monster set, we are using two heavy pieces of the Troll King. And both of them are going to be reinforced. This has max health. All the big pieces will have max health. Small pieces are max mag. And they're both going to be reinforced so we can get as much armor as possible. Troll King gives you healing done. And then when you heal yourself or an ally, if they're still below 50% health, their health recovery is increased by 1k for 10 seconds. But before we get into the stats, I'm going to go fix those traits real quick. Okay, so like I said, in pen on the small pieces, infused on the big pieces, reinforced on the heavy. Now originally, I was going to use Julianos until I remembered that it is actually a DLC set from Rothgar. You could use Hundings, although that only gives you max stam. I was originally going to put heavy on all the big pieces as reinforced with the Julianos and then light for a couple other pieces. Just that way we could get more resistances. So guys, I forgot to mention, 
the Mother Sorrow comes from Deshawn. You can farm this overland or buy it from the traders. Robes of Transmutation comes from PvP. And Troll Cane you can get from farming on Vet Blessed Crucible. And then the shoulder you can buy from one of the Undaunted vendors. Looking at our stats here, we're doing pretty good overall. The mag recovery can actually get up very high. I do not have any mag sustain issues even in PvP. It is very nice. The stam does happen to get down in the testing, which you'll see later. But as you can see, we actually do have a decent amount of crit chance at 56%. If I had kept that at Divines, I think I was around like 67% when it was all Divine. So you could go that route if you want, but you would lose out on your crit resist. So let me buff up here. So we're looking about 2500 mag recovery. That can actually get boosted up even further because there's a lot of hidden stats in there. Our crit chance stays the same, spell damage went up to 3700, penetration is not important since we're a healer, we get about 24k spell resist, 20k physical resist, and then our crit resist, I don't know if it's going to show here since we're not in PvP, but since we add 1400, that'll be about 3k crit resist. We're doing 32 attributes into health and 32 into magicka, and then we are going down here and we are using the Thief Mundestone. Now for our consumables. So you have a couple of options here. You could use Bibwitch Sugar Skulls, that gives you max pools of everything, and then some health recovery. Clockwork Citrus Filet gives you health health recovery max mag and mag recovery that would be great i am currently just using ghastly eyeball i already have plenty of health for me so i just went to max out my mag and mag recovery as much as possible you could also just do witch mother's potent brew if you just want to skip the health recovery and then we are using the spellcaster elixirs we do already get prophecy but we do not get sorcery and then we could also use tristat potions if you want to swap out a skill to get your sorcery now for the skills so first we're going down to the restoration staff and we are using combat prayer you hit this you heal everyone in a carpet that looks like this for about 9k that buffs up when you're buffed up everybody that's hit by it gets minor berserk and minor resolve increasing their damage done by five percent and increasing your resistances by 3k this lasts for 10 seconds you want to make sure this stays up at all times next up we're going into radiating regeneration when you spam this you and two allies or just three allies get basically 12k healing over 10 seconds this is just an hot that'll follow them around next up we're going into the shadow line and we are going to shadowy disguise even though we're a healer we're still slightly squishy and we want to make sure we can get out of areas where we don't want to be if you start getting damaged you can go cloak and go, go pop up somewhere else when you hit this you become invisible for three seconds and your next direct attack will always be a critical strike that doesn't really matter in our case next up back into the restoration staff line we're using healing springs when you hit this you have a giant aoe where you and allies will heal for 15k over 10 seconds it increases your mag recovery by 15 for each target affected stacking up to 20 times so just by myself if you look down on my tooltip you can see there's numbers that are stacking up that will continuously increase my recovery and i'm the only one in here so as we keep doing this, it'll increase 300 magicka recovery. So this is one where it goes even further in the stats. I just hadn't stacked it up. Next up, we're going down into the Mage's Guild line and we are getting Inner Light. This is a passive. Now you can use this. We're in mainly PVP. If you hit this, anybody who is stealth or invisible around you will be exposed and they can't go back invisible for four seconds but while slotted you gain major prophecy increasing our crit chance by 2.6k and our max mag by a five percent and then skipping a section down in the passives here you also get another two percent just for having that slotted coming up to the siphoning skill line we are using the soul siphon this is usually there just for any situations where i 
need to heal everybody right now. I, it's not the main one I will use, but when you hit this, you and nearby allies heal for 11k health and an additional 29k health over 4 seconds. You and allies also receive major vitality, increasing your heal and receive by 16% for 4 seconds and an ally can synergize and deal 9k damage and heal them for the damage caused. On the back bar, we're going into the shadow line and we are using Refreshing Path. This is another carpet skill that lasts for 12 seconds. When you and allies are in the carpet, we gain Major Expedition, Minor Endurance, and Minor Intellect. This increases our movement speed by 30% and Stam and Mag recovery by 15%. And they stay with you for four seconds once you leave the path or if the path ends and each second the path will heal you for 1300 health. Next up in the Undaunted skill line we are using Overflowing Altar. This costs 4k health so you want to be careful on when you use that. You can kill yourself if you're too low and you try to hit that but this creates a giant AoE where all your enemies are affected with minor lifesteal so when you hit them you heal for 600 health every second when you damage them. Allies can also synergize and heal for 65% of their max health if they're low. Next up in the assassination skill line, we are using Phantasmal Escape. When you hit this, you gain major evasion for 20 seconds, which reduces your AoE damage taken by 20%. After you activate this, it removes all snares and immobilizations from you and grants immunity to them for 4 seconds. While this is active, Taking direct damage reduces the cost of your next roll dodge by 10% up to a maximum of 100%. It can stack up every half second. I mainly use this for the major evasion since in PvP it's very nice and all of the DOTs that are actually worthwhile are basically AoE ones so this will help you survive. Next up we're going into the siphoning line and we're using siphoning attacks. This is a hidden stat buff to our mag. When you hit this all of your light and heavy attacks will heal you for 1500 health and restore 100 magicka for 20 seconds. And then fully charged heavy attacks restore twice the value. Once this ends, you restore another 4k magicka based on the length of time the siphoning attacks was active. So this does not show in your stat sheet, but this is another way we can get more magicka. Next up in the assault line, we are using Razor Calatrops. Being a healer is not all about just healing, it's also about debuffing the enemies. This, when you hit it, you'll do 800 physical damage every second, reducing the movement speed of enemies inside by 50%, and if they take damage from it, they also have major breach for 4 seconds. Now that 4 seconds doesn't seem like a lot, but if we throw it over here, every time he takes damage, that timer resets. So if you see right there, that timer keeps resetting up to four seconds. And that's what'll happen to the enemies. So we'll slow them down, do a little bit of damage, and debuff their armor. Now for our ultimate, I usually use the Sturdy Horn. This increases your group's max mag and max stam by 10% for 30 seconds, and you gain 1300 crit resist for 10 seconds. Now there are some other options. You could do Barrier or the Bolstering Darkness to give you some more control and buffs to your group. There's a lot of options, but like I said, I mainly use the sturdy horn. Now for the CP, there is no CP. If you wanted to use CP, I would go in and get some AOE healing, HOT healing, single target healing, extra spell damage to your healing abilities. I'd get these three passes, gives you max health, armor, and recoveries. And then I love Expert Evasion, but you could also, I'd probably also do Spirit Mastery since you are in PvP and people will die quite often. And if you do want to go into the green tree, Steve's Blessing is amazing. I'd come up here. This isn't as important in PvP, but I'd get Mount Speed and War Mount for sure. And at the end of this, I will show the stats. I won't go through the entire build again and show you the tooltips, but I will show you the stats at the end, what it would look like if I did have champion points equipped. Now for the passes. I'm only going to go over the passes that really affect this build. All passes will affect your build in some way. I'm just going to go over the ones that are the most important. Executioner is very nice. When an enemy dies within two seconds of being damaged by you, you restore 1k mag and stam. You don't need to get the 
kills just if you damaged them. So with your Calatrops and with your light attacking, you should be able to hit people occasionally before they die. Pressure points is nice. If you happen to have more assassination skills equipped, you can get more crit chance. On our front bar, we don't get any, but on the back bar, we do. If you do happen to deal critical damage, you and your group will gain minor savagery, increasing your weapon crit by 1300. That is nice, but once again, we don't have many damage sources, it's just Calatrops and our light and heavy attacks. In the shadow line, get Refreshing Shadows. This gives you 15% recovery to all stats. Snow Barrier. Shadow Barrier is very important. Every time you cast a shadow ability, you gain major resolve for 6 seconds. That'll increase your, your resistances by 6k, and the durations increase by 25% for every heavy armor piece equipped. So we get 9 seconds when you hit it. So if you hit this for 12 seconds, you'll gain armor as well as the healing. You hit this, you will gain armor while you go invisible. So it's very important that you keep this up. Dark Vigor is also important. Each shadow ability slotted, it increases your max health by 3%. And Dark Veil is very important. It makes your shadow abilities last two seconds longer, except for your invisibility, which that would be affecting this. In the siphoning line, get Catalyst. This makes you gain 20 ultimate when you drink a potion. Magicka Flood is great. This increases your max mag by another 8% while a siphoning ability is slotted, which we do on the front bar and we do on the back bar. That is also why I kept my jewelry arcane because between Magic of Flood and my inner light passive, I have a lot of max mag passives going on. Next up, we're going into the Soul Siphoner and this will increase your healing done by 3% for each siphoning ability slotted. And lastly, we're going down to Transfer. This will give you two ultimate every four seconds when you use a siphoning ability in combat. You will use this occasionally and your ultimate you're not gonna use super often, so this one won't trigger too often, but it is nice when it does. Into the Restoration Staff line, you want to get Essence Drain. This gives you Major Mending for four seconds after you fully charge Heavy Attack, and then you also heal yourself or an ally by 56% of the damage inflicted, which isn't gonna be much. Down into the Restoration Expert, you want to get this. This increases your healing by 15% if allies are low health. Cycle of Life is also amazing. This gives you tons of Magicka when you heavy attack. Absorb is kind of niche. If you happen to block an attack, you can restore 600 Magicka. And then you definitely want to get Restoration Master. This increases your healing straight up by 5% just for having it equipped, but only to the Restoration Staff spells. In the Light Armor, you want to get Grace, this will reduce effectiveness of Snares and reduce the cost of Sprinting. Evocation is also great, this increases your Mag Recovery by 20% and reduces the Magicka cost of your abilities. Spell Warding is also great, it gives you tons of Spell Resist. Prodigy is also very important, you gain tons of Crit Chance. Concentration is not as important, we're not doing a lot of damage, but it does help to at least penetrate some of that armor. Into the heavy line, we want to get resolve, so we get more resistances. Constitution to gain more health recovery and restore stuff when we take damage. Juggernaut to gain more max health. Revitalize to gain even more resources when we heavy attack and Rapid Mending, which increases our healing received. Now, I did test, so the Inner Light did perform slightly better than the Camouflaged Hunter, since this gives you that 7%, that 5% here, and the extra 2% from the Mage's Guild line, my tooltips were slightly higher with Inner Light than with Camouflaged Hunter. That being said, if you do want to use a Fighter's Guild ability, Definitely get Slayer, it increases your spell damage by another 3% for each ability slotted and banish the wicked so that way if you happen to kill something you gain 3 ultimate. In the mage's guild line, mage adept is nice if you are using inner light, this reduces the cost of it or if you accidentally hit it so you're not going to waste as much magicka. Everlasting magic is also nice if you are using it once again, this will increase the duration of it. Magicka controller is the main thing, you get max mag and mag recovery for having it slotted. And then if you do use it, you can get empower, but that does not affect 
players. In the Undaunted line, go down to Undaunted Command. This will increase the amount of resources you restore from synergies. And then Undaunted Metal gives you extra max resources. Into the Assault line, Continuous Attack is very important. You gain spell damage, mag and stam recovery for 10 minutes after you capture something. And you gain Major Gallop at all times. Reach is also great, it increases your long range abilities by 5 meters while you're near a keeper outpost. And then Combat Frenzy, if you happen to kill someone, you gain 20 ultimate. In the support line, if you do use something here, which you could use the purge, but once again, you got the plague set out there, so you don't really want to be purging. That was another set that I was going to look at was Stendar's Embrace. This would remove all negative effects from them every 30 seconds per target, but you don't want that if they're affected with the plague. But if you were using it, you can gain Magicka Recovery. You definitely want Combat Medic. It increases your healing done by 20% when you're near a keep and reduces the time it takes to resurrect another player by 30%. Now we are a Dark Elf. I thought I was gonna use more Stam skills than I am so it probably doesn't matter as much now because I'm not doing multiple stam skills so it might be better to just go high elf or even Khajiit since I do have crit healing. You could also do Breton if you somehow are having issues with sustain. Being a dark elf you reduce your damage taken by 50% from lava. People have found cheeses with that when you're running scrolls so that can be nice if you want to do that. But Dynamic gives you 2k max stam and max mag. Resist Flame gives you 4.6k flame resist and Ruination gives you 258 spell damage. Down into the alchemy line, get medicinal use. This makes your potions last 30% longer, which means they will have 100% uptime. Okay, so now for the rotation type thing. You don't have a rotation as a healer as much, but you just wanna make sure things don't die off on you. Now, with our fountain here, that is when you damage enemies, so that's where it is nice to have Calatrops. Because you can hit multiple enemies with it, and you will basically be guaranteed you're going to get that minor lifesteal heal. You want to keep your siphoning attacks up so every time you hit, you heal and you gain Magicka. Get your evasion up. Get tons of buffs, movement speed, very important. Keep everything up. Now, the illustrious healing, that's important that you keep that up because it has stacks. So if you let it run out, you drop your stacks. Whereas if you proc it slightly early, as you can see there, it is going to keep increasing up to 20. If you let that fall off, you're gonna have to restart those stacks and those stacks really help your mag recovery. Let's see what my mag recovery is now that that's maxed out. Wanna make sure everything's going. We're almost at 28K mag recovery. And that's what shows on the stat. There is more because of the siphoning strikes. So we are over here in black reach. Now this is with CP enabled, right? I still have no CP. Now, obviously, you don't want to go in here and have no CP. And I do have the maxed out gold gear on this PTS. So your gear may not be max level if you're not CP yet. That's really the only difference. But you'll see, I'm going to go over here to Harlan's since there's a lot of guards right away. I tried testing originally on a normal keep on the outside, but there's just not enough guards to really notice on the doors to a keep. So Harlan's gonna have a lot more people and we're just going to sit there and heal ourselves through it. And this is in PVP, healing is already halved. I have no CP to help me boost up my stuff. So you can kind of get a feel for how good this build is. Okay, so we're here at Harlan. Just gonna double check and show you. No champion points spent. So we're gonna go in here, we wanna get buffed up. There's a lot of enemies. Get Calatrops going. So this is where your stam is really going to show is they stun me like crazy. So I am breaking free like constantly and that's where having 
more stam would be nice but it's also just the sheer amount of cc's but you normally wouldn't be doing this but i mean as you can see like they only hurt if i let things drop off as long as things stay up they're not going to be doing anything to me and as you saw there my illustrious healing did drop off for a second but it's quick enough that i was able to re proc it and it kept the stacks but you want to make sure your aoe skills stay up now i should also be light attacking like crazy because our siphoning strikes is happening as you saw my magicka was going low but that's because i wasn't light attacking so i wasn't gaining my siphoning strikes stuff so if i just light attack weave in here and now that we got illustrious healing going like we're actually slowly killing them and they're not doing anything to me and so uh, illustrious healing dropped off so this is where like you'd be doing this for your entire group there's only the pixie dust that is single target heal so besides that everybody is going to be affected by these giant aoe heals you'll be keeping the group alive like crazy and buffing them and giving them crit resist and now that we're in pvp we can actually see my crit resist is at 3100 and then if i were to pop my ultimate here then we can get 4400 crit resist and that's without champion points and we're already surviving this well stam is always going to be an issue but also you're not usually going to be getting cc'd as constant as this players do cc you a lot but you also shouldn't be in the fight completely like that you should be in the background healing everybody up these guys are going to cc me like crazy yeah, as you can see, this build holds itself up quite nicely. Now, for the champion points, I am going to purchase all of them and get it set up, and then we can take a look at my stats. And then I would use Sustaining Shadows instead of Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter is better for PvE type stuff. So, I'm actually going to do Fighting Finesse. This will increase your crit healing instead of Focused Mending. The Focused Mending would only be affecting your Pixie Dust. Whereas this is going to affect overall all of my crit healing. You could also do something like Untamed Aggression if you want more overall spell damage. Okay, so now so this is what we're looking like unbuffed. And this is what we're looking like buffed. Almost 3k mag recovery, 28k max health, 20, 33k max mag, 3700 spell damage. 22k physical resist and 25.6k spell resist and now for the outfit for the helmet we are using the huntsman helmet now th this stuff is from dlc stuff i didn't want to have to look through every single piece and try to exclude whatever it's not so for the outfit it is not base game only sadly we're using the heavy huntsman helmet for the breastplate we're using the heavy cold snap goblin curse for the shoulders, we are using the Heavy Wood Elf number 4. For the hands, we are using Medium Wood Elf number 4. For the waist, we are using Light Ancestral Reach. For the legs, we are using Medium Order of the Hour. For the feet, we are using Light Fargrave Guardian. For the staff, on the front bar, we are using Wayward Guardian. And for the staff on the back bar, we are using Ancestral Reach. Now for the grays on the metal, I am using Tower White Gold. For the dark green, I am using Sylvanar Green. For the brown, I am using Colovian Deep Brown. And I will go over the color slots for you again.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoy the video. This is fun trying to come up with a build based off of someone else's challenge. If you have any build idea or challenges you would like to have me try out, please let me know down in the comments. I'm sorry I haven't been able to upload as much as I'd like. Between having two channels, it's been kind of having the amount of production I can do, and then I've also just been dealing with some stuff in real life so i haven't had as much time to work on my channel hopefully soon that'll clear up and then i can start uploading on a regular schedule again i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of this content feel free to check out my secondary channel venom syndicate i do other multiplayer games there survival games with my friend dragon killer we're going to be starting a new series there soon and Hopefully once I can get some upgrades on my PC that will open up some more games that we can play. We've been wanting to do seven days to die, but between hosting the world and recording, it's a bit too intensive on my PC right now. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and I will see you guys next time.